when discussing simple energy, waves will be a component that will carry energy. This is because when you think about light, light is a electromagnetic wave that oscillates in space and time and is essentially pure energy. However, when we discussed simple motion of waves, we came up with a formula that described the speed of a wave as being lambda times f. This, however, describes the motion of the energy propagating through the system. What this means is if I look at um, an example such as this, and take a mass, mass m, and I hang it from a spring, and I pull that spring down a set length, if this is the equilibrium position where the mass usually hangs, and then I pull it down, it now has some stored elastic energy. So we say that it has PE elastic here at this lower point. That corresponds to being a set maximum amplitude in the negative direction stretched out. So then when I let go, it springs back up, oscillates past the equilibrium point, would reach a point up here higher where it would come to a stop due to gravity and then fall back down. And so it oscillates in time vertically while propagating forward in time. We describe the energy as propagating through the system in a set direction, but the actual oscillation is occurring over multiple repetitive patterns in the vertical plane here in this particular picture. So we have to understand that this is the energy propagation or the speed of the actual energy, right, as opposed to the speed of the actual object that may be generating the wave that is then propagating through a medium. Nevertheless, if we're describing this as energy, the velocity that this would have here in the middle when it returns back down to the point some at some point later, which would correspond to any of the points crossing the axis here, the maximum energy would be a kinetic energy because the actual mass would be moving with some v. This v, v prime, is not the same as the velocity of the wave as it propagates through the medium. However, the wave energy is dependent upon the actual um, mass itself or the system itself. So we can describe, we can think of this as having uh, kinetic energy, then potential energy, then kinetic energy, then potential energy, then kinetic energy, then potential energy repetitively over a period of time. This is what waves are, a repetitive pattern, a periodic change of energy from one type to another. So if we were to just choose a point at the extremes, either at here or here, where A is maximized, this would be positive A, this would be negative A, we could describe each particle of a wave as having an E maximum or a total energy of one half K A squared where A is amplitude which we already know is the maximum displacement or the maximum X value. Um, given this information, it's, it's useful for calculating the actual motion of the particles as they cross the equilibrium line. But in most systems, the spring is an ideal system. And so what would happen is that this would repeat indefinitely forever. So if we were thinking of this as the energy of the individual wave. We don't want to get confused and add things together as we go across. Instead we want to think of this as being the total energy that is just being transitioned from one form to another over a time frame. Which is mostly to say that wave energy is constant. And so that's very useful. Um, however, it also means that the energy of a wave is not going to change in any way. Um, for a given system. And so what we're going to instead be talking about is the effect of distance from the source of the energy. And what I'm talking about is easier visualized if you think about a, a calm lake where I throw a rock into the water. The 
rock hits the water and pushes down on the water, which then causes the water to oscillate back up. And so what happens is we get an up and down vibration of the water that presses on water near it, that then causes water near it to go up and down, which then causes water near it to go up and down, which then causes water near it to go up and down. And we get the very familiar ripple pattern as we're spreading out. From the aerial view from above, each one of these ripples corresponds to a maximum amplitude of the water as the energy propagates through the system. What's interesting though is if you were to think about this as something that something more energetic like a hand grenade. The hand grenade explodes, the propagation of the wave through the air would have a similar pattern if you could see it in the air because all it is is a sound wave propagating outward. And everybody knows that if you stand very close to a hand grenade, you experience extreme danger. However, if you stand very far away, you experience much less danger. Yet, the wave energy is constant. And so it's important to note that from here to here, the experience of the wave that you as an observer has is different despite the fact that the wave energy is constant. And what this could only mean is that the energy, which is constant, is somehow dissipating over distance. This is the concept of intensity. Intensity is a measurement of power per unit area. And so what we have to imagine is that the energy of this propagating particle, right, that originally vibrated here in the center is a set value, right? But as the wave vibrates more and more water, there are more and more particles oscillating with each successive ripple. And so as the energy propagates away from the source, the energy, which is the power, is spread out over a larger area. And so when it gets, when the ripple gets to you out here, the proportion of energy that is now interacting with you is now much, much less than it would be if you were much closer because that energy has now been spread out over a large area as it propagated through the system. So in most cases, we will say the energy is constant, which is to say that P is a constant. And if we consider the uh, true nature of matter as being three-dimensional, if this were a hand grenade exploding in air, let's say, then the wave actually propagates not in circles, but in spheres, right? The energy propagates a, three, a full 360 degrees away from the source. So this intensity formula would be a P constant divided by the surface area of the sphere, 4 pi r squared. <clears throat> Since P is a constant and 4 pi is a constant, we can, we can therefore say that I is proportional to 1 over r squared. So the intensity of a wave is a measure, uh, an inverse measure of the radius squared. So as a wave propagates, the intensity of a wave decreases as a function of the radius due to the fact that there is no additional energy added to each particle as it propagates through, as the energy propagates through the system. Since the energy of a wave is constant, then instead of analyzing power of a wave, we'll be analyzing the intensity, right? The measurement of the value of energy spread across the surface at a particular location. And so what we'll be doing is comparing locations like location one and location two in this diagram. And so in order to do that, we think of it simply as two intensities, intensity one would be the value of the intensity at point one, and intensity two would be the value of the intensity at point two. But again, each one of these is simply equal to p, which is a constant, over four pi times the radius squared. Now again, the, the constants um, hold through the system, so what we can do is simply compare position 2 to position 1. 
simply by dividing. So if I say that I2 is proportional to I1, and I so putting these two together, we see that the P cancels, the 4 pi cancels, and the R's are the only thing that remains. So in terms of a proportionality, this transforms to be a ratio, the intensities being inversely proportional to the radii, would have a formula where we compare from one point to another as I2 over I, I1 compared to R1 squared over R2 squared. This is how we analyze wave energy intensity truly when the energy is constant. This is valuable if you compare it to our relationships with Coulomb's law and universal gravitation in the inverse square law because when distance uh, doubles, right, going from position 1 to position 2, then R2 would be equal to 2 times R1. And so what we see is that substituting in I2 over I1 being equal to R1 squared over 2R1 squared. Obviously we distribute the uh, exponent and we have R1 squared divided by 4 times R1 squared. The R1 squared cancels and we see that I2 divided by I1 is equal to 1 fourth. This is telling us that I1 is four times I2, or vice versa, I2 is one-fourth I1. So we see that the intensity of a wave changes as the energy propagates away as an inverse square. So if I go twice as far away, I experience one-fourth the amount of intensity. Now be careful to, to state that we don't know what the actual energy is unless we go back and solve this formula for energy. We'll be talking about power in, a, in another video.